Today on Addicted to Gear, we're looking at this really cool Silver Sky SE model. We're going to give you the complete rundown on this guitar, and there's a lot to talk about, so stay tuned. So let's start off with a little history on how this guitar actually came to be. So if you remember, back in 2018, John Mayer worked in conjunction with PRS and they came out with the core model Silver Sky, which was basically, I believe, a request from John Mayer to make um, a very strat-centric guitar design that would improve upon certain things that he felt was lacking in his very own strat. So uh, Paul Reed Smith uh, went to the drawing board and they basically, I guess, dissected and analyzed, um, you know, what John Mayer liked about his Strat and maybe what he would want to have improved on the Strat design and came out with the core model Silver Sky. Now that uh, guitar uh, caused quite a bit of controversy because um, a lot of die-hard um, Strat fans out there looked at how similar it was in look um, and kind of, I guess, took offense because you know how people can get really into their guitars and you know I, I understand how they have a special place in their heart for their special strats and all of that so when somebody comes out with a guitar that is very similar in look um, and then claims that it's better than than a strat you can you can see how that ruffled some feathers out there so then of course uh, the knee-jerk reaction was to uh, start uh, online battles on a lot of guitar forums as to whether or not the silver sky core model was indeed better than you know such and such a strat out there and this has been debated over and over again till the cows come home and if you want to jump into that kind of argument you can do that online any day of the week because I think the debate is still going on. Fast forward to earlier this year, PRS once again launched the SE version of the core model of the Silver Sky, which is what I'm holding right here before you today. Now, in my opinion, the SE model has been created to basically appease the consumers that just couldn't justify paying $3,000 or $3,000 plus Canadian for a core model. Silver Sky yet enjoyed what the Silver Sky had to offer in terms of features and playability. So the SE model comes in at about $1,099 Canadian at the moment this video was actually recorded. That may go up or down, I don't know. But it's... Um, Coincidence that it's just about the same price as a Fender player's Stratocaster. So I believe that, uh, you know, uh, some of that strategy was obviously to try and have a piece of the Fender pie, so to speak, with this model and maybe uh, convert a few Strat players to the Silver Sky. Now, I'm sure that move didn't particularly please the folks over at Fender, but I can guarantee you that uh, some people that are shopping for strats are considering the Silver Sky, and um, it is definitely a contender in my opinion. So I've been using this guitar in the studio right here as well as in live scenarios, and I wanted to spend some time with it to get familiar with it so I can give you a real unbiased opinion on the guitar and basically outline, underscore all the pros and cons associated with this guitar. Full disclosure guys, this guitar was graciously lent to me to be able to review for you and give you my unbiased opinion. So the fact that I do not own this guitar uh, will not cause me to automatically say it's better than it is just because it's mine. So no review would be complete without some sound samples. I'm going to be playing the Silver Sky and I'm going to be taking it through all of the pickup configuration. The bridge, middle, and neck position. I'm gonna also give you a little reference tone from one of my strats so you can have it in your ear when you're comparing the two. Uh, the sounds are gonna be played through a Princeton reverb sound and it's gonna be relatively clean going through some chords. One of the things I'd like you to notice is just how different all of the pickups sound between each other in the Silver Sky. Let's get started.
So if we start looking at this guitar in terms of its specs, there's no denying that it is very, very closely resembling a Strat. You look at the front of it and you know, if you, if I take the headstock and put it out of the shot like that and you just glance at it real quick, you know, it could easily be, be mistaken for a Strat. However, there are some very interesting improvements or changes that were introduced by PRS and we're going to talk about that today. One of the things you can't actually see below the paint is the fact that this guitar is made of poplar and weighs in at about just a little over seven and a half pounds which is not very heavy in my opinion. I actually weighed one of my strats that's off um, uh, you can't really see it, it's just to the side here, but it was more or less the same weight. So I'm, I feel that seven and a half pounds is a very comfortable place to be. Now the body carve on this is very similar to what you would find on a Strat. You definitely have the nice arm rest here. You have the typical uh, tummy tuck in the back and you have a few extra goodies, namely the carve here at the neck uh, joint. It's a little bit rounded over, which is nice, adds to the comfort and playability. And it also has the familiar carve right here at the lower horn, which is a staple of the PRS look on some other, other guitars. PRS decided to, you know, give it a bit more flair and give it a little bit more of that PRS flavoring, so to speak. Since we're addressing aesthetics, we might as well talk about the color choices of these guitars. There are a few select uh, paint colors that are being offered right now. So the colors that you get with this guitar are Dragon Fruit, Evergreen, Stone Blue, and Moon White. There's not a whole lot of colors to choose from at the moment, so that is one disadvantage as opposed to what you can get with a Strat or Strat style guitars because obviously they offer more selection of colors. I believe PRS will probably release other colors in the short term, but they haven't really mentioned if they would be doing that soon or not. The green is interesting, but not necessarily something that I would be after myself. It would take me a little bit of time for the color to grow on me and perhaps I would be more traditional and select a different color that is a little bit more familiar. So the fact that PRS has decided not to release this guitar in the typical colors that are quite popular like red, white, uh, black and so on uh, might cause a few people to kind of wait before they actually jump on the Silver Sky SE bandwagon just because I know a lot of people that just would not necessarily buy a guitar if they didn't like the color. So uh, coming out with a few very select uh, unique colors, uh, in my opinion, is a little bit of, um, you know, a risk that PRS is taking, but I guess they're, they're doing that to kind of stand apart and show that they're different from everyone else. So the front of the guitar is very, familiar. You'll see that it has all of the appointments that you are very, very familiar with. If you're a Strat player, you'll know the familiar five-way switch, the volume and two-tone configuration, as well as the three independent single coil pickups here. Um, you know, the regular bridge and uh, input jack. And I have to say that even the pick guard is very similar, not exactly the same. I have to also admit that all of the um, individual components do have slight changes to them to make them more PRS. So the knob here on the on the pickup selector is a little bit flatter, not round. The knobs on the uh, volume and tone don't say volume, tone, tone. Uh, they are very similar in shape, but they're slightly different and they have slight ridges to them that are a little bit more flat instead of just the the individual knurled knobs that you would normally see on a Strat. Um, the bridge is also very similar in the fact that it has bent over individual saddles, sort of um, a throwback to the more vintage style Strat style bridges. 
and they're also using a two-point pivot, which is kind of um, a little bit closer to what you get on more of the modern guitars. So there's kind of a little bit of give and take there in terms of what they're selecting to keep and what they're selecting to change. One of the interesting things on this bridge is the way they've actually implemented uh, the whammy bar. So it's not a typical screw-in style whammy bar that you would see on a Strat. So Strats have been using those screw-in style whammy bars for a long, long time. They're not necessarily uh, um, the, the most reliable or the best design in my opinion. I'm not a huge fan of that because I always feel that they are a little bit wobbly. This one actually uses a little Allen key so you you know slide in the uh, you slide in the whammy bar and you tighten up the little hex key in the back there and it snugs it in place and doesn't really move. Um, am I a big fan of this? I think it's a better design than what's being offered on a lot of the strats these days but i'm not a big fan of having to carry around the little allen key for uh, you know for us to kind of tighten things up that's for sure going to get lost both the allen key and possibly even the little hex screw here so it's better but i wouldn't say it's necessarily um, the best that i've ever seen the output jack is also very similar to what you would see on a Strat, but not exactly the same. It's a little bit more of a curved design, maybe a little bit more modern looking, but essentially pretty much the same. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about the pickups because I'm a, you know, I tend to focus on pickups. So I'd like to spend a little time talking about these pickups because this is pretty much, you know, the engine that drives the guitar. And I have to say that in the past, I've been kind of lukewarm about PRS pickups because I've always felt that they could stand for an upgrade. Now, I spent some time with this guitar, as I mentioned from the beginning of the video, and I played this guitar both here in the studio as well as in a live situation. And I have to say that the pickups really perform nicely, in my opinion. I actually am very pleased with them, particularly the fact that they do have pretty individual tones in every one of the pickups, and none of them seemed bad to me. They blend well together. The note definition is quite nice. The separation of the notes is quite nice. I didn't feel that any of the pickups were too harsh, you know, too bright or too muddy. They definitely had the spank that I was looking for and the, the squawk that I was looking for in a Strat style guitar. At first, I felt that when we were playing this guitar in the studio, they had a little bit of a bite at the top of the note and maybe uh, maybe sounded a little bit too aggressive, but actually when we played this guitar in a live scenario with a band, that extra little grid at the top kind of actually sat well in the mix and I actually found myself liking it quite a bit. So I really don't think that I would be swapping out these pickups. I think that if you buy this guitar, um, you'll be quite happy with what they have to offer. Now the poles on this guitar, um, uh, on the pickups on this guitar are slightly, ever so slightly staggered. Uh, the, the center ones are slightly higher. They don't have any chamfer in the magnets. Um, so otherwise they sound, they look pretty much like what you would see on a standard Strat style guitar. Obviously the other aspect of this guitar which is super important and has to um, satisfy the owner is the neck. And the neck here as you can see um, is looks a little bit different than you would typically see on a Strat. But how does it feel? So first of all let's address the elephant in the room. There's definitely birds on this neck. Um, now, um, you know, that's a choice that PRS has chosen to uh, make on most of its guitar. I think you can, you can ask for uh, a PRS guitar without the birds, but on the SE models, I don't think that's an option. I think it comes in the standard configurations and that's it. So if you're not a big fan of the birds, that might cause you a little bit of heartburn because some people simply don't like the birds and uh, feel like the birds don't belong on a Strat style guitar. I like the birds. I've always gone out of my way to purchase PRS guitars that had the birds on them. Originally, it was the other way around. You would get uh, PRS guitars the, the, without the birds. You would get the moons. And for an upcharge, you would be able to get the birds. Now, it seems like 
the birds are on all the guitars. So if you're not a fan, well, you're gonna have to perhaps select a different type of guitar. Other than that, the neck also has the PRS style headstock. Again, not what you would typically find on a Strat because the knobs for the tuning are obviously three on one side, three on another, and not six in a line like you would normally find on a Strat. Now, does that change things? I don't think so. I think, I mean, on a Strat, you typically have the, the nut and the strings going to the tuning pegs pretty much in a straight line. So that hasn't been a big issue. Um, for Strat players as it as it has been for people that play Gibson style guitars that kind of deviate to the left and to the right. So typically you won't have too many problems with tuning stability. Uh, for those of you that are not comfortable with three on one side and three on another, especially if you're playing strats all the time, that could be something to consider. But for me, I have both strats and Les Paul style guitars. I'm perfectly comfortable with this configuration. That being said, it is a little bit odd that PRS decided to uh, make the little um, sort of half moon cutout here go the other way. Typically on a PRS guitar, the pointy side is on the top and the side that is a, a little bit offset is towards the bottom. On this guitar, it's actually the opposite, which kind of seems odd to me because normally it would be like this, right? So I'm not sure why they decided to do that. What was the thought process behind that? Not a big deal, but maybe something to get used to if you are a PRS owner. I like the fact that they did put the Paul Reed Smith signature here and not, you know, something big and ugly like they used to do with the 245s with the big block letters. I'm happy that they decided to do that on all of the guitars now. I think that's a good choice. Um, one of the things that I don't like about these uh, tuners is the fact that the actual knobs are plastic. I would have liked to have seen them metal. It would seem to be a little bit more... Uh, higher end. It's one of the, the things that you kind of have to get used to. The little truss rod cover here is also plastic and you know a kind of an odd color choice if you ask me but that's what they came out with. So if you don't like the aesthetics of the headstock that is something that you might have to get used to. Um, as far as the nut goes it is not a bone nut it is some kind of uh, plastic simulation, graphite, uh, I'm not sure what they call it, but it's not bone. Um, but that is status quo on most of the SE models that I've seen. So if, if that bothers you and you prefer bone, you can definitely upgrade the nut. But I don't feel that uh, it's actually necessary. I think it works quite well. Now, one of the aspects of the neck is the fact that the front of the neck is rosewood. Uh, I like the fact that they chose to go with a rosewood and not something lighter. There's a lot of companies that are making guitars that are using sort of rosewood-ish woods that I don't really like, like Laurel. They just seem to be a little bit not dark enough in my opinion. So the neck to me is plenty dark, looks really nice. Now the other aspect you may want to consider is the fact that if you don't like rosewood necks, these guitars initially are just being offered with rosewood. So you can't get them in maple. Um, so another reason that you might want to hold off till version two comes out with more colors and maybe some choices of different options on the neck. The bird inlays are also not mother of pearl. They're plastic, which is no surprise at this price point. Uh, it is to be expected, but they're nicely done and um, there's no ugly unsightly gaps or glue joints or anything like that. The quality control on the PRS guitars has always been outstanding in my opinion. I've never come across a PRS guitar, especially in the SE line that I felt was um, had any kind of shoddy workmanship. So the neck is very, very nice. I'm glad they went with a rosewood board and not like a, a laurel board. I don't like laurel because I always feel that it looks a little bit dried out and cheap. And a lot of times the color is not consistent. So this uh, neck is really nice and dark and I really like that a lot. You do get a 25 and a half inch scale length with this, 22 frets, 
medium sized frets. These are not uh, huge or uh, too, too thin. I think they're gonna be perfect for a lot of the players out there. One of the aspects that might concern some people is the fact that the radius on the neck is 8.5 and uh, I believe on the Players Series Stratocaster, you're looking at, I, I believe, 9 or 9.5. So it is a little bit rounder, but it definitely has a nice feel to it. Now, here is one of the things that I'm going to give you my opinion on and take it for what, it, what it's worth. I've played both strats, and I've also played PRS guitars, and I feel like this neck is really right in between a Strat and a PRS uh, neck. It is very comfortable. I have no issues playing this neck. The fact that they went with a very satin uh, type finish on the back of it plays really, really well. It's really comfortable, super quick, super smooth, doesn't get sticky, which I like a lot. You'll see that it doesn't have a skunk stripe in the back, so the truss rod was actually uh, put in from the front. It is a two-way truss rod to make any of the adjustments that you need to make, but the actual playability on the neck is wonderful. It feels so nice. It's fast and it is comfortable, and I feel like uh, it doesn't, doesn't have me wanting something else. It's actually um, something that I'm, I got familiar with right away. Now the edge of the frets are nicely finished. There are no sharp edges, nothing that would actually cut the edge of your hands. I like the fact that the, the, the edges of the uh, fretboard, you don't actually see the ends of the frets in the rosewood, which is really nice. I'm glad they took uh, the time and put in the attention to detail uh, to have that because I find that's really, really nice. So overall, I'm super happy with the neck on this guitar and that is obviously where the money goes. And if you're not f comfortable with the neck, you're definitely not going to be comfortable with the guitar. So overall, the fact that the body is light, the fact that you have that familiar Strat shape, which is probably one of the most comfortable guitar shapes, in my opinion, ever made, it is a very comfortable guitar. Uh, I was a little concerned about the neck. I'm no longer concerned about the neck. I was a little concerned about the pickups. I'm no longer concerned about the, the pickups. And I feel that for a thousand bucks, a little bit over a thousand dollars, you are getting a very good, well-built, uh, sonically solid guitar. I don't feel that there's anything on this guitar that I would personally want to change right out of the gate. So if I got this from the shop today, I would be super happy with it. It wouldn't be anything that I'd be considering, oh, uh, you know, maybe down the line I'd like to upgrade this or change that. I don't think it's necessary. One of the other things that I also for, almost forgot to mention is the fact that the block on this guitar is a very massive block. I'll throw up some pictures on that for you. Uh, it's a nice, thick, solid block which gives the guitar nice sustain as well. So to wrap up this review, we're going to take a quick look under the skirt, so to speak, and uh, take a peek inside the guitar, see exactly what you're getting for your money. Once you remove the truss rod cover, you can see the truss rod nut, very similar to what you would find on other PRS guitars. Uh, one interesting thing that I did notice, however, is that just below the nut, you do see a little bit of the leftover rosewood fretboard. So the nut is not sitting on the maple, it's actually sitting on a thin sliver of rosewood, which if the nut was dark, wouldn't necessarily show up as much, but the nut being white, you can clearly see that. Upon further inspection of the bridge, I hadn't noticed that the actual post screws had a very unique design to them, not your typical Phillips head screws here. One other aspect of this guitar that I found to be very interesting under the pickguard is the fact that they actually removed the additional wood that you would normally find on a Strat just below the last fret of the fretboard. Um, that neck pocket is actually carved out in the PRS, which is interesting. I don't know why they chose to do that. I would assume that if the neck pocket was 
carved as it typically is, it would be easier to seat the neck into the right position and not have it move. In this guitar, they actually chose to remove that. Uh, there is a slight uh, routing at the bottom of the neck. I guess that's meant to hold it in place, but it doesn't go um, as high up as it normally would on a Strat. So that that is a very interesting aspect that I wasn't expecting on this guitar. You will not be able to fit in humbuckers on this guitar, unfortunately. For those of you who like to mod your guitars, that is simply not a possibility here. They did route out the entire right-hand side of the pickup cavity so that there's a common access to where the electronics live. I guess they did that so that it would be easier to route all of the electronics to the pickups. Once I flipped over the pick guard, I noticed that the pick guard was not entirely shielded. It was shielded in strips, a very interesting way to actually shield the guitar. The uh, section where the pots live was completely shielded, but the section where the pickups are was only shielded with these strips of copper tape. You can see that the shielding underneath the pots run all the way to the edge of the pick guard here. Um, and you'll also notice that the pots are full-sized alpha pots. And the selection uh, switch for the pickups also seem to be good quality. They do have a little plastic tab that keeps the wiring from the pickups neatly in place. However, after the tab, I felt that the wiring uh, got rather messy very quickly. Here you can see a closer view of the individual single coil pickups. You can see the tab there that indicates what type of pickups they are. What's interesting to note is that it does seem that they have the regular pull pieces and then they have smaller individual pull pieces between them. So I'm not sure if this is some kind of hybrid design for the pickups, but I haven't really seen that too often. The individual pickups all had pretty modest output. 7.5K for the bridge, 7.6K for the middle position, and 7.4K for the neck. Once we removed the output jack, we can see that it's actually cast so that there's a little round tab underneath where the screws lie. And those fit into a little route that they countersunk inside the guitar body uh, where the two screw locations are. I'm not quite sure why they bothered doing that. It seems like extra effort for nothing in my opinion. And the extra routing could lead to chip out in the paint. But uh, I guess this was done so that they can position the uh, output jack specifically in the right orientation and not have it move around. We can see that the rear routing is done very neatly. There's no messy routing that we can see here. The paint has been applied all the way through the cavity. There's no shielding here. It's not usually required, but it's nice to see that it's been neatly done. What is interesting to note here is the mass block that they decided to use for the bridge. The block will definitely give you more sustain uh, and uh, hopefully help with the tone of the guitar. I took a measurement of this just so you can use it as a reference and it measures 14.68 millimeters thick. Quite a bit of heft indeed. For those of you wondering what the width of the neck is at the nut, I took a measurement of that as well and I got 41.51 millimeters. At the 12th fret, I was getting 51.78 millimeters. It's very easy to play, it's very comfortable, nothing gets in the way. And uh, honestly, um, the ultimate question of this video review is, would I wanna buy the guitar? What I consider owning this guitar? Even though I do have strats, I have quite a few, the answer is yes. After playing this guitar here in the studio and in a live situation, I would consider buying this guitar. The only little asterisk to that is I would probably wait for some nicer colors. Um, I love rosewood fretboards, so I'm not one that's actually looking or waiting for the maple neck, but um, some of you might want to wait. But for me, it's really just a question of color. 
Uh, other than that, I think it's a great guitar. Uh, the price is not way out there. I think it's in line with what other companies are offering uh, for their for some of their guitars. So definitely, uh, uh, I would say in the ballpark. Maybe wait for them to start popping up on the used market and grab one for maybe eight or nine hundred bucks. I think it's it makes a solid guitar and a guitar that you can keep and play for a very long time. Regardless of whether or not the Silver Sky was launched to eat a piece of the Fender Pie, I think that it is doing some of its own thing. It definitely has a lot of DNA firmly set in, you know, the Strat, the Fender kind of legacy, uh, which a lot of people actually like and are looking for with a few improvements. So I think you're getting the best of both worlds if you are a fan of PRS guitars and you do like Fender guitars and maybe you are looking for something just a little bit different than what Fender's putting out these days, you might want to consider the PRS SE Silver Sky. A very nice guitar.